Hello again and welcome. It's another beautiful day that the Lord God has made. Uh, we're going to get into some more word about the purpose of temptation, but uh, let's go to prayer before we start. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for loving us enough to bring your word to us, that it would be relevant today as it was when you brought it forth. You loved us that much, Lord God, that you set everything up, that you give us instructions on how to move forward with you, how to get closer. You did not leave us alone. Satan, I take authority of you right now in the name of Yeshua, and I bind you. I bind you from this service. I bind you from this teaching, from my mind, from my body, from the electronics as this goes forth. And what's bound on earth is bound in heaven itself. I release the Holy Spirit to come over us, to protect us, and to guide us in all truth. Let this go forward. Let this reach the hearts and the minds of the people. Let our eyes be opened and let us learn. Lord God, again, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you in the name of your holy son, Yeshua. Amen. So we've started the last three sessions and we will do the same today in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And, and, you know, the reason we go over this and over this and over this, we're, we're just trying to get it in there, trying to give you something to hold on to, plant it deep with inside of you so that it'll be there, that, that you can reach down and grab it when you need it and, and throw it in the devil's face. It says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So, through that, we got to understand, and as we said in the previous study, the Lord God permits you and I to go through temptation. He permits us to, uh, but the Bible teaches, and we're going to get into that, that God tempteth no man. Okay, we will, we will get to the scripture for that today. So we need to understand what place it is that God, the role that he plays, the role that we play, the role that de the devil plays. Okay. We need to understand each, each and every role as far as it goes. And, and we'll also get you to the understanding today of what, what your role is. You know, well, you'll find that we actually play a large role in, in our own temptation. Okay. Um, but through that scripture we just read, it says that God won't put any more on you than you can handle. And he'll give you a way to escape. And that should be comforting. And that should carry us through right um so don't think that it's going to take you down don't get this mindset of oh you know the hell i'm going through and this is going to take me down and i know we've talked about that what what you need to do is you need to begin to profess out of your mouth things of faith things things that are good speaking the word of god so i would adjure you to say out loud i'm going to make it and you are going to make it Okay, if, if you'll hold on to the principles and use them. Uh, it, think of the story of when Peter got his eyes off of Jesus. There he was, he's walking on the water, right? And then he sees the waves. He gets, he gets his eyes off of Yeshua and he begins to sink. But immediately, Jesus reached down and lifted him up. He didn't let him sink. He didn't let him go under. And, and you and I can use that in our trials and our temptations to understand that the Lord God is not in the business of letting his children go under. Okay. He's not in that business. We also need to take into account that temptation comes to you by the permission of God, right? In order for you to get things in your life, right. That aren't right. Okay. Temptation is set to change you. And that's what it's about. It's to change you. God wants us changed. Why does he want us changed? Because we need to grow and we need, we need to become more Christ-like, okay? Uh, um, as long as there's flesh in our life, okay? As long, well, as long as we're being controlled by our flesh, let's put it that way, our five senses, um, we're, we're, we're not going to connect with God the way we need to. You know, the five senses are part of our soulish realm. We're going to talk a lot about the soulish realm and the spirit realm today, okay? But the soulish realm wants to dominate okay it wants to be in control and we we tend to let it dominate we we feel things we see things we hear things and we let that 
take precedent in our life instead of the word of God. We trust in, in these feelings more than we trust God's word. And we need to move into the other direction where we're trusting God's word more, right? But understand that's a process. It's not something that you wake up one day and it's just that way. Okay, it's a process where we, we start somewhere and we move and we move and we move and we grow into it, right? We, we grow day by day. Um, so, so we're building through this teaching, we're building that block foundation, if you will, with, with Jesus Christ as the head cornerstone. Okay. And, uh, you know, what I want to, what I want to get across to you is that God leads by the spirit. Okay. And we're, we will, again, we'll get into more of that today. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's important to know that, that God leads you by your spirit. God does not lead you by your soul, by this, this, uh, you know, five sense realm. And I'm sure that'll make more sense as we go along here. Now we gave you in previous weeks, the law for provision. We're going to go over that again. Same, same reason. We're just trying to plant it, trying to get it, get it uh, into your heart. You know, God gives us a promise, which is linked to a principle or condition, which in turn is followed by a problem or temptation, which will lead to the provision of that promise. Okay. And it always works that way. Promise principal condition, problem temptation, which will lead you <coughs> to the provision. And that's how it works. Again, we, we, you know, we talked about how if you're not careful, you can end up in that spiritual wilderness all the days of your life. You know, if that's where you want to be, if that's where you choose to be. And there's, and there's, there's too many Christians that have no, no idea that there's a way out. You know, they've never been taught in this direction to even know, to even understand what it's set for. Why does God permit this? Why does he allow this? Most of us, we think when temptation comes, we're being punished by God. You know, and then we get the other side that, that, that think that all this hell they're going through is to the glory of God. Those aren't right thinking and believing, okay? And, and wrong thinking and wrong believing will get you in trouble in your walk with, with Jesus Christ, okay? And I'll do it every time. Go to James 1.13. James 1.13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And that's what we've been, you know, I've been, I've been telling you week after week that God does not tempt anybody, right? And here's the scriptural proof for it. Well, if God doesn't tempt us, then who does? Well, let's look into that 14th verse, James 1.14 says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay. Temptation can come as the pull of a man's own evil thoughts and wishes. We'll read it again. But every man is tempted. And a man there can, you know, you can put woman in there as well. Okay. Because man here is all. All right. But every, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. So you, you are a product of your thoughts. You are a product of your home. You're a product of, of, of the words that come out of your mouth. You'll never be any better in society, in church, in your, in your walk with Yeshua than that which you think of yourself and that what you're speaking of what you are. Okay. And then that, that what you do. So, you control your own destiny. We've been through that. You do. You were given a free will by God. And, and, and you, need to, you need to take control of that thing. That's your free will. Okay, don't let any outside force determine that for you. And, and we get tempted when we get drawn away. Deuteronomy 28.1 says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the Lord, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Okay, if, if, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Now, if we're into that, then we're not being drawn away of our own lusts and enticed. Okay, we're not being trapped if we're into this. Uh, <clears throat> one of the processes that we have to go through is something called the renewing of the mind. Okay. Uh, and if we can, if we can go through that process, 
you know, feeding your spirit, the word of God and, and, and getting that prevalent in your life, then we can get our minds focused on Yeshua, Jesus. And we don't need, and then that keeps us from thinking about this other garbage. Okay. Uh, if we can just get our minds focused on, on Yeshua, who he is, if we could really get that into our hearts and we can, okay, we can get that into our hearts. If we can get that into our hearts, then we wouldn't be worried about these, these little things in our lives that seem so big, but really don't matter. Again, the renewing of the mind is a process. It's something that, that we need to work on every day, planting, feeding your heart with the word of God instead of that other junk. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So again, if our, if our minds are stayed upon the Lord, then we're not going to be drawn away. In fact, if, if you're diligently seeking the Lord God, you know, trying to observe and doing all that there is within his word, you're not going to be drawn away. You're not going to be drawn away. Okay. Again, that's called growth. Growth is something that takes time. It's not something that you wake up tomorrow and you're all grown up. Okay. You're not, you're not going to get to the place overnight where you're got total control of your thoughts, you know, and you're, and you're, only seeking the Lord God, all your thoughts, all this is put together. It, your walk with Jesus Christ is a day by day walk. Okay. Some of us, we thought, Oh, I saved filled with the Holy ghost. Boom. That's it. That's the end of the matter. But that was not the end of the matter. That was the beginning. You understand? It was the beginning. It was the start. Okay. What was it? The start of, it was the start of the race that Paul talked about that we're all running. Okay. Too many of us get to thinking again, you know, I, that's it. I got it. That's all there is to it. I got, I got Jesus in my heart and, and, and it's done. But if you will study, you know, you get into the word of God, you begin to study, then you'll start to understand that the, the growth pattern is set by God, that you don't automatically grow up the day you receive Jesus into your heart. Okay. It, it, it's a slow, ardent process one day at a time, one day at a time. Okay. And one of the biggest problems in the church world is we got saved. We got filled with the Holy ghost. We believed we were taught, you know, that our problems are over. And then you go through life six to eight months down the road, maybe a year, maybe two, you got twice the hell going on that you had before you were saved, filled with the Holy ghost. Then what happens? Because you believed that everything was taken care of, that it was over. Now you're in the mindset of, well, this didn't work for me. And if we're not real careful, excuse me, we have people that fall away because of that. People that end up denying the power of God altogether. And, and, and that's, that's terrible. And, and what it is, is what we started with in the first series, that lack of knowledge. Okay. That lack of knowledge. Knowledge has not been given to them. They didn't get that knowledge. And it's very, very important. Okay. So you don't grow up in the word of God just by, you know, happenstance, huh? haphazard chance. It, it, it doesn't happen because you're filled with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't happen because you receive Jesus Christ in your heart. It starts there, but it happens because you've become diligently involved in the word of God on a daily basis. Okay. What we want to do here is we want to teach you enough about the word of God that you're not just sitting around daydreaming about it. You're, you're going to grow up. Now, why are you going to grow up? Because you're going to go through the going throughs. You're, you're going to go through the wildernesses. You're going to learn as you, as you go, but we need to understand first why we're going through it. Why are we going through it? So you need to know the whole purpose behind temptation and the whole purpose is to grow up in Jesus Christ. Okay, to become mature in the Word of God. Let's go to uh, 2 Chronicles 32 31. 2 Chronicles 32 31. It says, How be it in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him that he might know all. That was in his heart. And he, he, that's something to focus on right there. 
God left him to try him, to allow him to be tempted, that he might know all that was in his heart. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you got to realize when, when you get into temptation, you're going through things in your life, you start to say things, you know, whether it's to your, your, your wife, your kids, your brother, your sister, whatever, you, you, you start to speak about it, you start talking about it, you know, oh, my back really hurts, or your mouth, it, it, the Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks, right, and, and you'll find out, if you listen to yourself, when you go through those things, you will find out, you know, what you're made of when you really get into a bind, when you really go through a temptation. Now, when we read here that the Lord left him, the Lord doesn't really leave you in the whole sense. Okay. We, you know, we, we, we got to get this straightened out. He's not gone. He's in your heart. Okay. He leaves you uh, in a sense that you, you, you don't feel the presence, you know, you, you, you feel like you're, you feel like he's not there, but he's, he's there. He just kind of turns it off, if you will. It, it, your awareness of his presence is not being identified, okay? Lifting up or whatever, whatever you want to call that, seemingly hear his voice. So we're going we're gonna to go back and we're going to talk about faith. And we're going to put this together so you can understand this whole thing of, of why, why he leaves us. The Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith, right? So if the just are going to live by faith, then when you're going through your temptation, your wilderness, or the going throughs, whatever you want to call it, then it would not be faith if God were to appear or send an angel or, you know, tap you on the shoulder or hear a booming voice or whatever. That wouldn't be faith, okay? That would violate the word of God. And, and most Christians don't understand God cannot violate his word. Okay. God does not violate his word. He, he, he set up the whole kingdom in accordance to his word. And, he, and his word doesn't lie. Okay. He won't violate it. He absolutely will not violate it. So if you're around those people that, you know, they're, they're having dreams and visions of how to be led through their temptation, it's not scriptural. Okay. I'm not saying people don't have dreams and visions because they do. what I'm talking about is during the times of your testing and your trials. Okay. We all have to go through the same process within that. Okay. We all have to walk through it by faith, by faith. And, and here, what we find out is God left him to try him to find out what was in his heart. Right. And believe me, <laughs> you know, you go through your, your testings, your, your trials, your temptation, God's going to know. Okay. I mean, he already knows, but, it's going to come out of your mouth. Whatever is in your heart is going to come, you know, rolling out sooner or later. Again, why would, why would God leave us in our time of, of temptation? And, and I, I just got to back this up. Just a reminder. He, he doesn't leave you. He's not gone. All right. He's just letting you kind of think you're alone, huh? feel as if you're alone. He's not going to, I'm going to pull you out of that thing. All right. Uh, why does he do that? Because he, he, he won't violate his word. Okay. We talked about the free will. You have a free will. You, you are to choose for your own life. In fact, he, he gave us a choice. He said, you can choose life or you can choose death, but you have that choice. It's up to you in your life to make those choices. Okay. Adam had a choice. He didn't have to partake of that, that tree in the midst of the garden. He, he could have chose not to. He had that choice. And, and within that, understanding that God's not going to violate our free will, then we also have to understand that we can't be violating anybody else's free will. It's not my place to tell you what to do, it, you know, whether it be in your temptation or to tell you that you have to watch this service or I can't tell you to do that stuff. Those are your choices. It's not my place to violate that. Who is anyone else to violate your choice? And you have to look at yourself and understand that you can't do that to others either. We can't be violating other people's choices. If God gave us free will and he lets us alone with it, who are we to mess with anybody else's, right? 
And, 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 and that's the reason he leaves us is so that we can make those decisions in our wilderness. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to do what's really in your heart. That's, that's the decision you're going to make. That's the choice you're going to make. And so he leaves us so that we can make our choice. And, and if we, if we make the right choice, then, then great. We're on to the next one. Otherwise it's another trip around hmm? our, our own spiritual wilderness. And this is why we find people stuck in the wilderness for five years or, or longer because they, they never came out. They never came out of that temptation. Uh, they're still within that same wilderness wandering around. And the reason they are, they weren't given the knowledge of God's word to be able to come out. Uh, again, unfortunately, it's that lack of knowledge. A lot of people don't know how to come out of these spiritual wilderness places. John 14, 30. Hereafter, this is Yeshua speaking, okay? Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Now, what he's saying here, the prince of this world is Satan, okay? Hath nothing in me simply means he doesn't have any interest in me, okay? Remember, every man is tempted. Christ was tempted, right? When, when he's drawn away of his own lusts and enticed, okay? So... What we're going to do is we're going to take a situation that Christ went through, a temptation that he went through many, but we're going to talk about specifically the one after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Okay. And the Bible tells us that he was in hunger. So the devil comes along and he tempts him. Now Yeshua could have been drawn away with his own lust for food. Okay. He, he could have looked at that and, you know, man, I'm really hungry. He could have easily done that. Okay. And, and the, so the devil comes along, throws a question at him. If you're the son of God, just turn those stones into bread. Huh? How about turning those stones into bread? And, and Jesus Christ could have turned those stones into bread. We have to understand that. He could have been trapped. He could have, you know, but no. He said, no man, uh, uh, you know, he said, no, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So what did he do? Uh, as we, we touched on earlier, he spoke the word of God. Okay, he spoke the word of God. He he didn't let that enticement, that entrapment come because he knew about it. He was educated about it. He knew in the spirit exactly how he had to handle the situation, or he too would have fallen into the trap and been, you know, snared or entrapped. But but he didn't let that happen. So instead of letting his mind be drawn away, as we you know happens to us, he went right back at the devil with the word of God right back, right in his face. Okay. And he had to do that a number of times. And then the devil left him forever. No, for a season, for a season, you know, we, 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 we get to thinking, Oh, he was, he was Jesus, the son of God. And he just had an automatic, you know, he was going to, he was going to make it through. No, he was tempted just as you and I are tempted yet. He overcame, he sinned not with his body nor with his mind, he sinned not. And so what we can take out of that, you know, is to be sure that we are using the word of God and not our own opinions, not our own opinions. Okay. We need to keep feeding upon the word of God. Keep feeding, keep feeding, keep feeding upon the word of God. Romans five seventeen. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive Abundance of grace and the gifts of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. We are to reign over all of our circumstances. Okay? Jesus came, did what he did, destroyed the works of the devil, and gave us the entirety of his kingdom right here on the face of this earth. Uh, uh, you know, so you and I are able to be overcomers, more than overcomers, because of what he came and did for us right? Our, our righteousness is in him. You are the winner. You are the winner. You need to understand that. If you, if you will fix your, your mind, getting, getting it set toward knowing that you don't, we don't win every other battle with the devil, okay? We are to reign over every circumstance, all of our circumstances. Again, that's 
uh, you know, that's part of the process. You don't wake up tomorrow and, it, you know, you're reigning over every circumstance. It's part of that growing, right? We got to grow into it. Romans 6 1. Romans 6 1. We're going to go all the way down to, to 23 in this. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should ser not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart, from that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow. What we need to understand, you know, through these, these 23 verses, number one, we, we need to admit and recognize our own failures. Okay, we need to admit and recognize our own failures. There a lot of times we can't even see our own failures. You know, you ever notice though, we can always see everybody else's. Huh? You can always look across at, at Mr. So-and-so and, and see everything he's doing wrong. Huh? But we sure have trouble looking inside ourselves and seeing seeing our own failures, but understand the prerequisite of growing up with God is being able to look at yourself in, in what we refer to as the spiritual mirror and judge yourself. Okay. See yourself as what you really are. Not, not what you think you are with Yeshua, but exactly. We need to identify the truth of where we're really walking with him. All right. We got to get honest with ourselves. You got to be honest. Uh, this thing, you know, it either works in your life or it doesn't. The word of God is either working full time in your life or it's not working full time in your life. You're either being blessed by God or you're not being blessed by God. And you in your own life have to be the one to identify that. Okay. It can't be somebody else pointing it out to you. You have to identify it in your own life, but you got to be honest to make those evaluations. Okay. You got to be honest. The second thing is we need to resist the pull of the wrong desires. 
Okay, we gotta learn to resist those, those pulls, those draws, if you will, of, of the wrong desires. And, and I can assure you the devil will see to it that all kind of wrong desires come into your life, okay? So we need to get priorities, okay? Priorities. We as a, as a human race, we're, we're, we're terrible at, at being able to put our priorities in the right place, right? The Lord God is looking for solid people who, who will get their priorities in place and keep them there, okay? And, and that's as important in our growth and, and in our walk with Yeshua as, you know, pretty much anything else. It's, it's just coming to the point of saying, you know, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, right? I'm going to go there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be on time and I'm going to do it every time. Okay. <laughs> every time. Why? Because the Lord God blesses faithfulness. Faithfulness. God blesses our faithfulness. And, and you can't have faithfulness until you sit down and you get a list of priorities and you stick to them. Okay. Our, our priorities as the human race changes like the weather, you know, one minute it's sunny, the next minute there's clouds and it's raining. How many of you listening to this have gone from church to church to church, or maybe, you know, you listen to this on the YouTube, but you're not going to quite make it to the end of the series because something else draws your attention. I, I, you know, I can't tell you not to do that. Uh, you have your free will as we talked about, but the problem with that is how are you going to get to the end of the study to find out how to grow, right? If we're going to jump from place to place to place, you're not growing because you're not staying long enough to get your priority straight to learn some. Hmm? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you end up, you know, you're in a place where you're never obligated to anyone. You never get any priorities, right? You don't get them where, where they need to be. So where's your faithfulness? Hmm? Then all of a sudden it comes to a time and a place where you think you're supposed to be doing something for God and it doesn't work out. And it doesn't work out. The day will come when we will stand before God and, and find out that what we're being taught today is, is why it didn't work out. Okay, because there are certain things that we need to do to move ourselves into higher places with God in order to, to, to get to those depths. Okay, it has to be done. So as I said, we have to resist the pull of the wrong desire. Okay, we have to be able to do that. And we have to start turning ourselves over to God to be used for his purpose and not our own. Okay, you know, We'll, we'll have people come in, sit down. They'll hear one scripture in this that they don't agree with and they're gone. You know, they're, they're looking for something to be said that they didn't agree with and they're gone. And, and that's not what God's after. God wants us to love each other. He expects us to love each other. And without love, uh, our growth is nothing. You know, it's zero. Without you loving me and me loving you, we're, we're just babies in Christ, you know, and, and there's no way to get around that. We can think we're grown, you know, look in the mirror and I got the gray, think I'm all grown up. But if, if we're not in love, then we're just a baby, you know. <laughs> and, and that's where we get to. Romans 8.1. Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And, and we need to understand, uh, we've been big about saying there's no condemnation in Christ. And, and that's true, okay? But there's something that we, we desperately need to know about that. There's no condemnation for those that walk after the spirit, okay? But if we're walking after the flesh, we're, we're going to find a lot of condemnation. Okay? We're not talking about the flesh. We're talking about being led and walking by the spirit by your, you know, by your spirit. Second verse says for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do. And that it was weak through flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of, of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. 
and that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, the, Paul's, Paul's trying desperately to get across to these people here in Rome that you've got to walk after the spirit. Okay, we've got to get into that place. Got to get away from the flesh and what it wants. Fifth verse says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Okay. So we can come to a place where we live without condemnation. We can come to that place. We can be free from, from the, the vicious circle of sin and death. And we can be able to obey God's law. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that again. We can live without condemnation. We can be free from the vicious circle of sin and death. And we can be able to obey God's law. How do we do that? If we will learn to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Okay, and that, that's, what we're trying to, <laughs> that's what we're trying to do here is teach people by the word of God how you can grow up in the word of God and be led by the spirit of God not your flesh, you know, the, the flesh, you know, it thinks it's being led by God. Your flesh has nothing to do with your spirit, nothing whatsoever. Okay. God does lead your spirit, but not your flesh, not your soulish realm, not your five senses in your mind. Okay. Those things are at enmity with God. They're in battle. Okay. Your, your mind and your five senses are always going to battle with your spirit. That's the reason Paul made the, the statement about Abraham who against hope believed in hope. Paul, Paul was at a point where he could call those things which be not as though they are. When you can walk by the Spirit, you can do that. Okay, As long as we're going to be led by our five senses and our soulish realm, we're not going to be able to call those things which be not as though they are. Okay, We can't do that with, with, the, with the flesh. Now the battle is contingent on how much of the Word of God that you that you've let your mind be renewed by okay that that transferal from the word okay you read the word goes into your mind which is part of the soulish realm and then into your spirit man and that's that's the reason we don't need to get too concerned about how much of the word of god you memorize okay i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but if you feed on it and feed on it and feed on it it'll be in there and god will be will be able to to draw it out as you have need for it in your life. Okay. If you're being led by the spirit, God will bring to remembrance that which you need to know when you need to know it. You know, <laughs> we've been so caught up in this. I mean, we, we grew up, you grow up and you, you learn to walk, you learn to use your five senses. This is hot. This is cold. And that's, that's all we've had to depend upon. So, it, it takes time to figure out what, what it means by walking in the spirit. And then we get to a place where we can start to learn about that kind of stuff. And you find out that there is something else. There's something other than your five senses. We can actually be led by our spirit. You can do that. Okay. But it, again, it's not just because you said, you know, you hear this and you go, yes, I'm going to be led by my spirit. You know, I've read the right book. I've listened to the right tapes. I'm now into that. That's not how it works. Here's how it comes. Are you ready? Through studying the word of God, through the renewing of your mind, and understanding that this is going to take one day at a time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's, no, there's no mother may I uh, big leaps in the spirit. It's going to come day after day after day after day, diligently seeking God. And, and if you're wondering why I'm laughing, you know, it's because, you know, I've been through this and I still got into that same mindset too. You know, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and everything's just going to fall upon me. And that's why, you know, that's why I'm laughing. But because, because you learn, you, you read that you go through this, and then you still think that's, that's what's going to take place. Eventually, you, you come to the realization, no, now I understand it's a day at a time. It's a day at a time. And, and those that are going to do that, those that are going to set themselves with that mindset that every day, I'm going to seek, I'm going to seek, I'm going to seek, continue moving forward. Those are the ones that are going to get it accomplished. Okay? 
that will just, they'll just keep seeking through your time of temptation, okay, through the good, the bad, and everything that's ugly, you're just going to keep going and keep going. Let's look in that sixth verse again. Not again, but in the sixth verse, Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, we can have life and a soul kind of peace, okay? A soulish realm, five senses kind of peace, which means quiet in the midst of our turbulent world. Okay, that's, that's what that means. It's meant to be ours in Christ. It is ours in Christ. And, and you can have that. And you can walk in that. And you can live that. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, so I hope what, what's being done here today is it's being placed into your minds and especially your spirit that you're going to have to have that transferal of the word of God get into your spirit, man, okay, from your minds in order to accomplish this. So people that don't have peace, you run into them, and this is what, what they lack, what we're talking about, okay? Not, not all, it's not always the case, but a lot of times it's what they lack. Some of the, some of the biggest messes with people, you know, in their Holy Ghost walk with Jesus is, you know, they're sad, they're unhappy with their walk, is because they're trying to do things with their mind that needs to be done in the spirit. Okay? It's a learning process. Learning the difference between walking in your flesh and walking in the spirit. And there is a big difference. There's a huge difference. Okay? And then and the only way you're going to get there is what? Receive the word. Get it in your mind. Transfer it down to your spirit and grow up, right? Again, uh, this, this thing with temptation, we need to understand it's heaven sent. It is heaven sent. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. You know, it really doesn't seem like it. But with every temptation that you come through, you get closer to that depth with God that, that you're after. And if you don't come through it, you know, if you, if you don't make it through that temptation, you, you know, if you've got to make 99 more trips, 100 more trips, you're not growing. And that, that's something we desperately need to understand. Okay. If you've been stuck in that same thing for, you know, five, seven, 20 years, it, it doesn't matter. Then, then in that time, you have not grown with God because that's what the temptation is for is to grow you up, to bring you forth from glory to glory or from anointing to anointing to anointing uh, without going through the going throughs you're never going to get to that depth of God, depth with God that you're after. That's why we were told in the scriptures to rejoice in all things. Man, Todd, how can, you, how can you rejoice when you're sick? How can you rejoice in the Lord God when you're broke? How can you rejoice in the Lord God when you're depressed? But you see, Paul knew the depth of what we're trying to teach even today. Okay, He knew the depth of going through temptations that's where we're gonna we're gonna stop today we'll be back again next week to give you more